The road leading to Red Poppy Ranch was nearly a deal breaker in the very beginning. Both Cedar and myself felt that it wouldn't be possible to live up here full time when the road conditions would get as bad as they would in the spring and in the fall. We tried to talk each other out of it, but then one day we came up after the snow had melted, the road had partially dried out, and we pulled up in front of what is now our property. And on the right hand corner of the property was a cedar tree. I tried to help my wife see the potential, but at that time the property was so heavily treed, it was really hard to see the vision. But more than anything, we both continued to admire just in fact how beautiful it was once we got up here. In the beginning, we thought maybe we could build a small cabin up here and have a house in town as well. But the deeper we got into it, the more we fell in love with what we were doing, the more we realized this was our future. The road requires a tremendous amount of maintenance on a regular basis. It's an unmaintained county road. We knew this when we bought the property. Both us and a few of the other landowners that own land up here have spent a fair amount of money trying to deal with the all-consuming mud that continues to be the challenge with living up here. We were told that the person that owned our land before us was stuck in their small camp trailer for almost 10 days before they finally walked out. That was all they could handle. They gave up on the place and stopped making the payment. Someday, hopefully sooner than later, there will be enough gravel down on the road that all of the struggles and all of the fights and all of the dirty vehicles will be a long lost memory. I don't know if the challenges associated with living up here would have been worth it if I didn't have my wife and kids in the back of my head reminding me why the struggle was worth it. It most certainly takes a special kind of woman to not only put up with me, but to be willing to struggle with me along the way as we've developed our property. Shortly after meeting Cedar for the first time, long before we'd started dating, I heard a story about a day when her dad came home from dove hunting and needed help cleaning and plucking the doves that he'd harvested that particular day.
When he asked Cedar and her two older sisters to help clean and pluck the doves, not only did the two older sisters object, very quickly the two older sisters began screaming, even crying, doing whatever they had to do to get out of the job. When Cedar just dove right in, began plucking the birds, and did it with a smile on her face. Cedar, Cedar, come look at this. After hearing this particular story, as well as others, whether I knew it or not, she became more and more attractive to me. She's always had a passion for the outdoors and spending time in nature. She took a chance on me when it was recommended that she shouldn't. She knew every deep, dark secret about me, and yet still took a chance. We were very close friends long before we began dating, but more than anything else, she demanded that I improve. She was the only girl that I'd ever dated that required this of me. I suppose because of her willingness to take a chance on me, I will likely spend the rest of my life proving to her that it was a chance worth taking. I installed the 20 inch big blue sediment filter before I installed the ultraviolet water purifier. These two together should guarantee that our water is the best that it possibly can be. The water is still hard. I had to rearrange the water heater and move things around to make room for a water softener that we'll likely install at some point down the road. But we can now sleep easy as we all drink the water knowing that the water is as safe as it can be. No more chlorine, no chemicals, and the ultraviolet purifier that will kill anything that could be potentially harmful. I added a couple of stainless steel water flexes to the tankless water heater that was required by code, and I scooted it over to make room for the water softener. The road constantly requires attention and the windows to give it attention oftentimes can be short lived and I have to have a fully functioning tractor that I can depend on when the road needs this attention. I've been waiting on a few parts to show up for the Massey Ferguson 135 tractor.
After replacing the head gasket and getting it running, it had a few oil leaks here and there that were simple gasket failures that I wanted to replace and the parts finally arrived. After having nearly two inches of rain over the last few days, I wanted to be able to work the road over, fill in any ruts, and flatten things out before the road got too hard and it became unmanageable. The mud up here can be incredibly challenging, but the good news is as soon as the sun comes out, it seems to dry incredibly fast. Now that we've got a fully functioning and dependable tractor, the road will be more than manageable. As you can see, Cedar made it down to the storage unit, picked up her 12 boxes of fall and Halloween decor, and she's doing her best to make the house a home. Uh, she also does what she does best in the sense that she cleans up the messes that I leave behind. Uh, there's nothing better than being married to a woman that's not afraid to get her hands dirty, especially in our application up here. Um, you know, she recognizes that there's jobs that just need to be done and she gets them done. We went through a good three days of rain, a little bit of snow, mostly rain, probably close to two inches of rain. And the end result was our solar battery bank got down to about 70%, which is the lowest that it's gotten since we fired it up. Now, thank goodness the sun came out and was able to get it back up because if we get down to 50% on our battery bank, and go any lower than that, we can damage the battery bank. So it was just a reminder that I need to get the standby generator tied in. I need to get a wind generator tied in like today. There's always this little breeze. In the evenings, it seems to pick up. And if I can find some sort of a wind generator that can function with these uh, volatile winds that we have up here, they're not typically excessive, but they're always either low or uh, you know sometimes 15 to 20 mile an hour winds. And there's got to be something that I can find that will that I can tie into our system that might supplement a little bit. It seems like uh, people either love or hate the wind generators. So I'm just hoping and praying that uh, we can find one that will work with our place here. But uh, this next week, that's going to be the focus, getting the two generators, um, the wind generator and the standby generator tied into our, our system. The weather still looks incredible next week. The other biggie is firewood. While the daytimes are beautiful, high 50s, mid 60s, the evenings are cool. And as well insulated as the house is, we're burning wood. We're not burning a whole lot of wood. Uh, it doesn't take a whole lot to keep the house warm, um, but we don't have enough wood. And um, next week, uh, I'm gonna go over to my favorite spot to cut wood and see if I can't accumulate enough wood for both the fire and also for the, uh, the, the shop. I, I still wanna try and get some of the structural stuff done on the shop as we uh, head into winter. The other thing I'll say about that little tractor, I spent quite a bit of time on that tractor this week and uh, I was able to use it this morning and run down the road and uh, fill in some of the ruts and the holes that are caused by these storms and the tractor ran great. It's got a little tiny oil leak. I think it's coming from the valve cover gasket I'll have to look at that. But overall, it was a great week. We've got plenty to do this next week. Um, I still haven't even had a chance to start working on the siding on the front of the house here, but we're under the porch, and so I can frankly do that anytime. But we're making progress. So firewood and the generators next week, and we should be good. <laughs>